Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Daniel Amare in Ethiopia. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you uh, for inviting me for this program. I'm also very happy to be with you for this program. Well, thank you. You have actually known my wife, Jessica, yes. longer than I have known her. <laughs> Tell me, how did you meet my wife, Jessica? Okay, it's, I think about uh, maybe more than 15 years. Uh, we met with her, uh, I think, when we are going to uh, perform uh, World Impact Ministries Crusade in Kenya, uh, especially the place, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Kericho or uh, Kakamega, uh, also with Joshua campaign, but we stay, we work uh, closely for six months there, and we evangelize there. Uh, there are so many friends still, I remember them. We were uh, having a very, very special time at that time. We are evangelizing uh, by all our power, you know. The passion that time, uh, what we have is amazing still, you know. Uh, so I'm very, very happy. Uh, being known with uh, Jessica. Jessica was my best friend at that time, and she is working closely with me. Wherever she go, uh, I was there, and wherever I go, she was with me. <laughs> I know Jessica loves you very much. Wow. And uh, so at that time, World Impact Ministries was the ministry led by Pastor Peter Youngren, yeah. a great Canadian evangelist. And Jessica was working with Pastor Peter. Uh, she actually lived in Kenya uh, as a, a missionary team leader uh, for a year. And then she became a crusade director and helped to organize some of the World Impact uh, Crusades. And so that's where she met you. And uh, at that time, you were one of the, the sound engineers for the, the big crusade. And you helped to, to set up the sound system and make sure all the sound uh, was, was working right. Uh, tell me, what was some of the fruit that you saw? The, were those big crusades? Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, first the, for the first program, we uh, moved Joshua Campaign sound system and the track from Ethiopia down to Nairobi, uh, Kericho, Kakamega, Meru, uh, Nyanyuki, Nairobi also, we have, I think, more than six programs in Kenya, and then after... And, and Joshua Campaign is the ministry started by Carl Hargerstam, yes. he's from the nation of Sweden, and uh, he started Joshua Campaign, and, and now the leader of Joshua Campaign is uh, Per Akfis, and, and we're actually here this week in Ethiopia with Joshua Campaign. Many years later, they've been doing crusades across this whole part of Africa for, for 23 years now. And, but you were there in the very early days, the very beginning. Yes, I'm uh, also the first man for Joshua Campaign also, and oh. also for uh, Pastor Peter when he came to Ethiopia and meet uh, uh, the Joshua Campaign founder, Carl Hargstam, I was there, and uh, we were uh, for every program together with Pastor Peter and uh, Carl Hargstam. Then after some time, uh, uh, Pastor Peter sent his new sound system from Canada to Nairobi. I was there in Nairobi, and I uh, built another uh, very new sound tower, stage, and so many things. After that, we drive down to Tanzania, uh, even uh, to Zanzibar also. We have unforgettable uh, mission time at that time. I think it is uh, more than uh, 70 years or something. You have been involved in evangelism for many years now. Um, after you worked with Joshua Campaign, then you began to work with a, another ministry here in Ethiopia that was uh, using the tool of Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames to evangelize. Tell me about that and what that evangelism was like. Okay, uh, the ministry called Reality Outreach Ministry and it's led by uh, Pastor Chris. He lived in London and he is a, a African coordinator also and we have one ministry here. We project Heaven's Gate and Hell's Flame uh, every night uh, to the invited church. The churches will invite us uh, we go there and we project uh, that movie. It is a very powerful movie. 
video and uh, so many people are uh, surrender their life for Jesus. Uh, I served with them for about six years. In six years, for sure, I can say uh, more than 10,000 people get saved through that ministry, I remember. Uh, even with one night uh, video program, about 600 people got saved in down uh, South Ethiopia. Uh, also in Addis, Addis is a, a big city, and uh, we project, uh, no, uh, we uh, uh, did the live drama in one of the big churches uh, with one day presentation, about 450 people got saved here in the middle of the town. So it was very, very powerful. Uh, I don't know this time, uh, I didn't hear that much because of uh, the politics and the living things uh, in our country. The ministry do not active that much like when I serve. So it was very, very uh, powerful ministry. And I did with them and with Joshua, with World Impact Ministry. You know, from the day I got saved, still I am serving God on the mission field. Uh, right now, you know, uh, sometimes uh, when uh, Corona, uh, COVID-19 uh, become active, uh, things are going down. Uh, so that time uh, living is very challenged. Uh, so I working part time uh, in the church and I try to manage my family. You know, I work on one Christian international hotel as a manager, but it takes me away from ministry. That was not good for me because that is not in my heart. So you I, obviously have a, a great call from your God, from from God on your life yes. for evangelism and a, a passion and a, and a heart for that. And, and God has honored that over the years. And you've done so much evangelism yeah. here in Ethiopia. And, and, and now you're you're working with a church here. Tell me what is uh, evangelism like at the at the local level working with the church. Uh, evangelism, you know, um, every church is claim that they are doing evangelism. But when you come uh, uh, to the tangible things, uh, most of them are not evangelism. Uh, they are not working evangelism. They are promoting themselves. Because when you are doing evangelism, people must be uh, God saved and may, must be uh, disciples of Jesus. Then they must be attached with the church and uh, uh, with the ministry for the, the rest of uh, lifetime. So uh, at this time, somebody can hear and he, he decided to accept Jesus. Then there is no people to follow him, uh, to, make, to help him to grow in the uh, house of God. So my church, we plant a new church. Maybe it is about uh, four months old this time. We are struggling to uh, erect, but we... Uh, put a very clear strategy and uh, goals for our ministry. And we decide to make every new believers who came to Jesus to uh, disciple them and to help them to grow fully in Jesus Christ. So that make, uh, made a change, you know, uh, this time uh, for this time, Christianity and the church politics. We call in Ethiopia, this is church politics because Every minister, every, every pastor are fighting for themselves, not for their mission, not for their call. So we need to make, to uh, push these things towards the right uh, direction, uh, which is uh, stated in the Bible. Let's talk about the nation of Ethiopia for a moment. Ethiopia is mentioned many times throughout scripture yes. and God's eye is upon this nation. It's a very special nation. In fact, in the book of Psalms, it says that Ethiopia shall quickly stretch out her arms towards God. And, and we've seen that in our crusade in, in Ambo, Ethiopia this week. Thousands of people lifted up their hands to, to say yes to, to Jesus. And over the years, uh, Christianity has, has grown greatly in Ethiopia. Really, Christianity goes all the way back to Acts chapter mm -hmm. 8, the Ethiopian eunuch who was ministered to by the first yes. evangelist, Philip the Evangelist. And uh, so Ethiopia has a very rich heritage of serving Jesus. Uh, but during the, the era of communism, 
uh, the evangelical church at the end of that era, that they, they were very persecuted. They were tortured for their faith. Uh, many Christians were even killed. And at the end of that period, the, the evangelical church was only about 3% of a nation at that time, mm -hmm. maybe about 40 million people. Yeah. Well, today, the nation of Ethiopia has 112 million people, and the evangelical church has grown from 3% to now it's over or 20 percent and so this is one of the greatest revivals in mm -hmm. church history mm -hmm. not many people know about what god is doing here in ethiopia but just tell me what is it like to be a part of that and to and, and what do you think god's plans are for the nation of ethiopia uh great and very interested question that you know <laughs> uh, everything is as you say uh, in the book of god ethiopia mentioned more than 40 times you know and the first country which mentioned before Israel also is Ethiopia. So uh, God has a promise for Ethiopia and he has a covenant with Ethiopia. So uh, what right now we can see in Ethiopia is that his, king, uh, his covenant is fulfilled because uh, you know Ethiopia more than 10 years, I know, uh, but the previous government, the previous administrative systems in Ethiopia are very, very uh, harsh. And for Christianity also, you know, everywhere uh, Christians and the churches are persecuted. You can't have a right even to have a Bible in your hand in some part of Ethiopia, more, maybe more than half part of Ethiopia. In Addis and in some big cities only, you can uh, worship uh, open door. Uh, maybe you can express your faith uh, boldly uh, for anybody. But when you go uh, to the northern part of Ethiopia, which is right now in problem, in trouble uh, with the war, uh, with the previous uh, ruling party, uh, so th that people are claimed, they are the first uh, believers of the world, even they claim uh, more than Israel's, uh, before Israel's, they are the first believers, Christian people, and the original, genuine Christian believers, that is uh, Coptic Orthodox Church, we call it. And they, they do not teach the, uh, their believers the Bible, so uh, their Christianity is mixed, highly mixed with uh, um, heresies and cults, you know. So uh, that thing uh, crippled the true uh, Christianity grows in Ethiopia. but. Be, uh, after uh, 10 uh, years, uh, the churches got a bit chance uh, to declare themselves as a Christian community and they start uh, evangelizing all over the country. Uh, we are doing here and there and so many big, big crusades with uh, uh, Joshua campaign, the first uh, big crusader in Ethiopia. Uh, I want to thank them uh, right now. And Peter Yangreen also did a very, very big thing. And also, uh, you as an evangelist came to Ethiopia, even we got together to the western part of Ethiopia, you remember, to the south, and we did uh, in many, many parts of Ethiopia a big evangel evangelized crusades. And they are very, very fruitful. Maybe we don't have tangible data in the churches but I think they are, we Christians in Ethiopia right now, more than 20% of the population. Uh, the other thing what I want to say, uh, before you can't see uh, churches maybe uh, within one or two kilometers uh, uh, distance, but nowadays maybe f uh, 500 meters you can get two, three uh, churches, even uh, around us right now, we have about six churches with a radius of 500 meters. So that is also a sign for our growth of Christianity. And many, many ministries are now active in Ethiopia. Also, uh, I am also, you know, uh, I have a mission in northern part of Ethiopia at Bahardar. There is one tribe which is negative weight of people. They claim they are Muslims, but they are not true Muslims because the Muslim society even, they do not uh, give them a chance to be with them. Uh, they are uh, almost uh, the people who, which are uh, 
heads by other community of the northern part of Ethiopia. They eat hippopotamus meat, uh, and they are uh, not good in cleaning. They eat hippopotamus meat? Yes. Is that good? Have you had not some? Not good. So, because of that, the other people reject them, you know. They are living at the outskirts of the Bardar city. Uh, in number, they are about 10,000. Uh, last year, I was there for one week to study about that society um, because we have a plan to evangelize them. So, uh, I have uh, five people with me who are working for that mission, and we are working with the uh, Northern uh, Bahadar City uh, Christian Fellowship uh, together, and we have uh, going to train the pastors in the city how to reach these unreached people to evangelize. So. Um, the other many ministries are working here and there in Ethiopia. So right now, the evangelize, uh, evangelizing uh, work is in very good uh, way. The only thing now we have uh, difficult about uh, the war or the conflict in northern part of Ethiopia, uh, it stacks a lot of evangelism workers around there because we have a plan even to move to Tigray. But right now it is impossible, impossible. Uh, we believe that God may give us a good time to reach them. We are praying for the peace of Ethiopia. Praise God that we need, the whole world need to pray because uh, we are following the medias of uh, the Western world. They transmit not good uh, and uh, genuine uh, news uh, because as you see now Ethiopia is a very peaceful country. But they still, every day they say, Ethiopia is in danger, uh, it's not a good area to live, uh, even to visit, so uh, it's false. So fake news here and there, uh, you know, corrupt our... Well, we uh, have felt completely safe the entire time that own. we have been here, and everyone that we have met here in Ethiopia has just been so welcoming and so gracious and kind to us. Let's talk a little bit more about my wife, Jessica. Oh, okay. You knew her before. Uh, I met her. Yes. Uh, tell me, what was she like back wow. in the day? Uh, what was it that uh, made it so special that uh, to work with with my wife Jessica? Ah, Jessica is a wonderful woman. You know, she loves too much Jesus. That's why I married her. Yes, I know. I know. Even you know, I know you before. You, 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 you meet her, I think. Mm -hmm. So you love Jesus, she loves Jesus, and that is a great uh, uh, combination. So, uh, you know, she also has a different heart for me. I know, I know very much. Because I have uh, so many pictures in my home, uh, which uh, is together with her, you know. When we are going to a shoeshine place, she is with me. I have a picture. Uh, I have a picture with her when we go to buy something in market, cultural market in Tanzania, in Kenya, in so many different places to visit uh, zoo, uh, visit uh, some special places. You know, I know I have a good place in her, her heart. Me too. You know why I am running to visit and to see you? Mm. Because I thought. I may meet her through you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jessica sends her love. She is in Ooh. Tulsa, Oklahoma now with our, our two children. Yeah. But, uh, I know that she has great love for you and, yeah. and just uh, really enjoyed working with the Lord mm. uh, hand in hand with you uh, so many years ago. Uh, Brother Daniel, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. Thank you for working for the Lord and Amen. your heart for evangelism. You are such a great blessing. Thank you, thank you. And I want to say, Jessica, uh, just uh, uh, take my greetings for your kids and Jessica too. Uh, I am very pleased for what she is still doing with Jesus. Thank you, Jessica. Be blessed. Amen. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.